G'day. I've probably had about 20 airport lounge visits this year. Some have been spectacular. Oh, it's glorious. Just glorious. Others, more modest. But my experience at Milan's Malpensa Airport was easily my most disappointing of the year. You are invited to the Montale Lounge. It is upstairs here at Terminal 1. There are two terminals at this airport, and I've come in here, and I can tell you this is nothing special. Singapore Airlines uses this lounge, along with a number of other airlines. The food's OK. Selection of drinks, nothing special there. Just reminds me of an ordinary cafe. It does have a view out over the tarmac, but there's just hardly any seating for the number of people here. I think you're better off eating on the plane, quite frankly. Well, I've just been up to have a look at the food and drink offering, and I've uh, decided to downgrade my ordinary status to extremely ordinary. Why? Well, they've got paper plates, wooden knives and forks wrapped up, and in general, it looks like a very cheap offering. And British Airways also uses this lounge, so I don't think their customers would be too impressed by it either. But whatever the airline's paying, and I gather it's probably about 30 euros per person in here, They'd be better off giving you that money and you're spending it out in the general part of the airport. My gut feel is if you're coming to this lounge, you're probably spending the minimal amount of time here and the maximum amount of time in the business class club and if you're flying a premium airline. With that lounge review done, let me take you back in time now for the flight from Amsterdam to Milan prior to the Italian Grand Prix. Today I'm flying Iter Airways to Milan Lanata Airport and uh, as a business class passenger you get to use this check-in area where there are plenty of desks and very few customers. Well this is lounge number 25. Thankfully uh, only about half the seats are occupied, it's very relaxed. I'm going to let you in on a secret. I have decided to have no sugar for 28 days and today is day one and so far where are we half the way through the day? I've managed to stick to it. I don't know how many days I can get through it, but I'll be keeping you up to date. So this is my breakfast this morning. I don't think there's any sugar in that. And hopefully the end result is uh, I lose some weight. You've had a haircut. I have. You're looking at the aircraft I'm flying on today. This is an A320-216. Well, I'm on board now and I've got seat 1A. Good leg room in 1A and a comfortable seat and it's blocked out by moving this panel down from the middle of the seat. Well, about halfway through the flight and lunch has been served and it looks good. There's a salami roll, a lovely Italian salad, bread roll and a sweet treat or two, which I won't be eating. Well, here's my feedback on the meal. The salami and cheese in the roll was great. The roll itself was very dry. Salad was okay, nice dressing and I had none of the sweet treats. What do I rate that meal? Well, for a short flight, I'll give that a seven. After five days in Monza shooting the Italian Grand Prix, it was time to head back to Malpensa Airport for the first of two Singapore Airlines flights. But first, this. I struggle to work out what the value of a travelator like this one is next to me here because I imagine it's a very expensive exercise to put one in. Now I've done a, a walk along there at the same speed here and I'm coming up to clock my time not walking on the travelator. It comes out at 18.8 seconds. If I go back and have a look at the photo I took of my stopwatch for the other thing and it came up as 13 per So effectively, that piece of very expensive machinery saved me five seconds. And if I stood on it, my time was 41 seconds instead of walking it down here at 18-ish and 13-ish if I walked on that. There you go. Cheers. Enjoy your flight. That's the plan. So I'll eat this way. Thank you. So just found out it's only 11.45 to Singapore, which is long enough for a good snooze. Just been served a sparkling mineral water. Uh, no Southern Comfort or Coke for me. In fact, I've been on this uh, no sugar diet now for five days. I've only had one little slip up, one small scoop of ice cream last night as my reward. Anyway, after 28 days, I'll tell you whether it's done me any good. But just looking at this seat in general, it's got some nice little storage areas, both next to this seat here and up here in front of me. It's probably the widest business class seat of any aircraft I've ever flown on. Although the area for your feet down here 
in comparison to that is quite small, but when you see the difference between this seat and the one I go on on my next flight, you'll realise that this is a cut above uh, the other one. We left the gate just a couple of minutes after our scheduled departure time. At the moment we're sitting out here on the runway waiting for approval to take off. Cabin crew, take off station speed, thank you. So we're airborne now, and can you hear this? It's so quiet. It's a beautiful aircraft, and I'm really loving this seat. I'm loving the, the pure size of it. We're about 40 minutes into the flight, and the chicken satays have come out. So I've had a plate, three pieces, delightful. Uh, and luckily, somebody didn't have theirs, so I got a second one. And for main course, I've selected the veal. There are a choice of four, and the veal is from there. Three-star Michelin chef. How good can a meal be on board? Will this be a memorable one? One thing I like is the tray table goes up and down, which is very handy if you've got a meal on here and you want to go to the bathroom or get something out of the locker. You don't have to pack everything up. We have For lunch, I started off with the halibut and I realised that uh, I'm not a halibut man, but the main course was something special. That was the veal, and it had figs with it. And I can tell you that I had a meal with veal and figs at Hotel de la Ville a week ago in Monza, and I rated it 9.1, I loved it. This one, not quite as good, but I reckon 8.5. And dessert, well I had none of the sweet stuff, I ended up with just some fruit. At the moment we're three hours in, I've done all my eating and drinking, so now it's time for, hopefully, six hours sleep. Well, good folk, uh, I had three hours sleep, a very ordinary performance on my part. Clearly needed more than one sleeping tablet for that. We're about 30 minutes away from landing and, uh, as usual, service on board is spectacular. For breakfast, it was a simple fruit salad. I do love this bed, the way it folds down. The next seat, as I mentioned before, is not quite as luxurious. Goodbye. You say goodbye. I subscribe already. Good on you. <laughs> Cheers. Singapore Airport is a very big airport and thankfully I've arrived in at Terminal 3 and I'm leaving from Terminal 3 and I've just got a quick moment to have some breakfast. Well I have just enough time to have some spring rolls for breakfast here in the lounge. It's quiet this morning and uh, not a great deal of food on offer for breakfast but enough to sate my appetite. Hello sir. Hello Good morning. You. Thank you. Oh sir. May I? Thank you. You're good to go sir. Yeah. Have a nice trip then. Bye bye. I'll do my bit. Cheers. Well, second and final flight for today. Oh my gosh, look at this Airbus 380 next to me here. It's just a stunning aircraft. Nothing quite so lavish for us today. We're on uh, a 787. Lovely aircraft. But as I mentioned before, different seats. Oh, it's quite dark in here. But the crew will be great, they always are. Hello, 12A. Thank to my you, ride. this way please. Cheers. Well, straight up you can see that there's a big difference between the size of this seat and the size on the uh, A350 before. Also, the suite in general is much smaller. The entry gap to get in is smaller. If you're ever offered the choice between the Boeing 787 and the A350 in business, you'd always take the A350 because the seat is just so much better. Well, I've been going uh, four and a half hours now. I did have a little bit of sleep, and I must say this is uh, nowhere near as comfortable as the bigger seat for sleeping. The other thing is I wanted to show you outside, but I can't brighten the windows because the cabin crew determine how bright they are. It's a clever design, but you have no control. So this is about my 47th flight this year. And at the moment, Singapore Airlines have got some pretty good value flights going to and from Australia, as opposed to, say, Qantas or Qatar, which are wildly expensive. So what should you take out of that video? Well, don't bother with that Montala Lounge at Milan's Malpensa Airport. And if you get the choice, take the big seat with Singapore Airlines. And if you can, 
get the bulkhead because it's got a lot bigger space for your feet. Well, that's pretty much me done. Now it's your responsibility to become a subscriber. It's uh, bizarre that about 50% of you watching aren't. It doesn't cost you anything and you get a whole host of travel videos and Formula One. You'll find all of my F1 digital images at ProStarPix.com. For a range of F1 photo books, wall art, signed prints and merchandise, go to KimElman.com. And for my best images live from the track and during the week, head to Instagram and search at Kim Ilman. Thank you for watching and stay passionate. Mm-hmm.